Okay, today's fun fact is brought to you by Miss Woodley. The average lifespan is 28,782 days. This is Unit 1, Cycle 3, Reasonable Domain and Range Notes. So our domain is always our x value, and our range is always our y value. So I'm going to use two colors. Blue is going to be my domain, and pink is going to be my range. These are all continuous because they are lines. So to find domain and range from a graph, it's the domain is how far left to how far right our x values can go. So the first thing I do is I always label my points. So this is negative 8, comma 1. This point is 2, comma, negative 4. So now I'm going to highlight my x values. Yeah, negative 8 and 2. Which one is less? Negative 8. x goes in the middle. The greatest value you can have is 2, so it goes all the way to 2. The other thing we need to talk about is our dot. If our dot is closed, that means it can include that value, which means your mom's like, oh, I can give you $15 to spend at Six Flags, and I don't need any change back. So that means less than or equal to, if it's open, it's your mom telling you, you have $15 to spend, don't spend it all, and you spend $14.99. So that would be less than without the equal to mom. So now we do our range. That's our y values. So I'm going to highlight both of my y values here. I have 1 and negative 4. Which of those is less? Negative 4. Y goes in the middle, and 1 goes at the top. Now all of these are closed in, so they need the equal to sign underneath. Now we're going to do number two. I always start by labeling my points. Negative six, negative two. Six. Okay, my domain is still my x values. I'm going to highlight both of them. It goes from negative six to positive four. Now the dot next to the 4 is filled in, so it needs the equal to sign. This one is not filled in, so it does not need the equal to line. Now I'm going to do the same thing with my ranges. I have negative 2 and 6. Which of those is less? It goes here. Negative 2. That's open, so I don't put the line. Y goes in the middle. This one's closed. It's 6. I'm going to let you guys do the describe. Describe how to find the domain of a graph. I'll do the domain. It's your job to do the range. First, I label my point. The domain is the x values. And then least to greatest. One, X, one. Okay, I'm gonna let you do the range. It should look the same except with the Y values. Okay, let's look at number four. Again, label my points. This one's negative three, negative one. This one's five, three. Highlighting my domain in blue. It's negative three. And they're both open, so they both need that. X goes in the middle. Now my range. Negative 1 and 3. Negative 1 is less. It's open. Y goes in the middle. 3 is the highest value I can get. 
Number five is a little different because this goes on forever. It does not stop at 10. It keeps going past that. Forever. And ever. And ever. So I'm going to label the one point that I do have. Okay, what do you, I had to stop for a second. Don't know what is going on. So my point is negative three, two, and this goes on forever. So I'm still going to highlight my one X value that I have. And then it goes forever this way. So if it's increasing, that is a positive value forever. So the lowest it can go is negative three. It's a close and dot. This is an X. You cannot contain infinity. If it goes on forever, it's infinity, like Buzz Lightyear, okay? And then this is my Y value, and this one's going down forever. So what we call going down forever is getting more negative forever and ever and ever. We call that negative infinity. You cannot contain infinity. And the highest it'll go is 2. So we can write these in a simplified way. That's how you'll see them on the star. You pretend that the infinity part's not there. So the domain would be x is greater than or equal to negative 3. And my y is less than or equal to 2. Okay, those are the simplified ways. Let's do number 6. Same thing. Label my point. X values first. I have five, and this is going negatively forever on my X values. So that's negative infinity is the lowest it'll go. X goes in the middle. This is an open circle, so it stays like that. And five is the highest it'll go. Now let's do my range. The lowest it will go is negative 2 because it goes up forever. So negative 2, y goes up forever. Let's write these simplified. My domain is x is less than 5. Coming with my infinity. My y is y is greater than negative 2. Why is everything greater than negative 2? On the back, these are real world scenarios, which we call word problems. So example one, a car can travel 32 miles for each gallon of gasoline. The function d of x equals 32x represents the distance d of x in miles that the car can travel with x gallons of gasoline. What's that saying is, you get 32 miles per gallon. x is how many gallons of gas you have. The car's fill tank holds a total of 17 gallons. Is this discrete or continuous? So discrete situations where you either have something or you don't. You don't have partial value, so you can't have half of anything. But we can have half a gallon. So that means this is a continuous situation. We can drive half a mile. We can have half a gallon of gas. So our domain and our range, that's our independent and dependent variables. Our two variables for this one is miles and gallons of gas. So the thing that is independent is gallons. And the dependent value is miles. The miles you can travel depends on how many gallons of gas you have. So the least possible gallons of gas I can have in my car is zero. You can't go anywhere, but you can have an empty tank. The maximum possible is 17. It says the car's fuel tank holds 17 gallons. So if you fill up at the gas station, you have 17 gallons in there. So our domain for a continuous situation is an inequality. You can have all the way empty, and you can have all the way full. So 17. You cannot have infinity here because your gas tank has a limit. All right, miles traveled. The least possible miles we can go is zero. You can get in your car and not go anywhere. The maximum, this is where a lot of kids get confused. A lot of kids say 32. 
but you get 32 miles per gallon. So if we have 32 miles per gallon of gas and it's all the way full, that's 32 times 17. which is 544. So our least possible is zero. We can actually travel zero miles. Why? And the most we can go is 544. Example two, theater students are trying to sell the last 15 tickets for their upcoming play. Each ticket costs $4. Is this discrete or continuous? Can you pay $2 and go see a show? No, they will not let you see half. So this is discrete. You either go or you don't. Our two variables are tickets and money earned. So our independent value is tickets because they will exist whether you use them or not. Our dependent value is money earned. The money you earn depends on the tickets you sold. The least possible tickets we can sell is zero. No one wants to come. The most is 15. That's all we have left. So the way we write discrete situation is we put D colon brace and then we list in order all the possible values. All right, money earned. If I sell zero tickets, I make zero dollars. If I sell all 15 tickets, they're each four dollars, that means I can make sixty dollars. We write the range the same way. If I sell zero tickets, I make zero dollars. If I sell one ticket, I make four dollars. If I sell two, I make eight. So each time it's going up by four. Oh, what's that called? A sequence? Who knew? I'm going to put dots. It stops at sixty. Your teacher might have you list all of them for a test. I'm not going to. Example three, you have three quarts of paint to paint the trim in your house. A quart of paint covers 100 feet squared. It thick. This is the function that represents it in square feet of cube quarts. So is this discrete or continuous? Can you use half a quart? Yes. Can you paint less than 100 feet squared? Yes, so this is continuous. Our two variables are quarts of paint and area painted. The independent value is quarts of paint. The dependent is area painted. Okay, how big you painted depends on how much paint you have. The least possible paint we use is zero. The most paint we use is three. So our domain is zero. We can use every last drop of paint. The most we can use is three without buying more. The least possible area we can paint is zero. Some people choose not to. The most is 300 because we have three quarts and each one covers 100 square feet. So that looks like zero. Why? 300. Jenny has decided to sign up for yoga classes her gym is having next time. The registration fee is $15 and each class costs $3. Class will be held twice a week for four weeks. Is this discreet or continuous? Will they let you go to have a class for $1.50? No. This is discreet. Our variables are classes and money spent. So the classes will occur whether you go to them or not. You don't spend any money if you don't go to the gym. That's why I don't go. Just kidding. All right, least possible classes you can go to is zero. The most you can go to is eight because they're twice a week for four weeks. So our domain, zero, one, two, three, all the way to eight. Money spent. If I don't go to any classes, I've still spent $15 because that's how much it costs to join the gym. Now, if we go to all eight classes and each one is $3, that's $24. But I have to pay $15 to join. So the total I've spent is $39. So my range, it starts at $15 because even if I go to zero classes, I've still spent $15. After that, it goes up by three. 18, 21, 24, all the way up to $39. All right, sorry at the end, it went a little fast. Appreciate you.